we have the outside kitties, and we like to give them a place that's, you know, out of the weather yeah. when it starts getting colder. Um, and to do that, to facilitate that, we have a screened-in porch, so for the winter, we put up plastic around it, right? And then I noticed there were some other gaps at the top in the rafters. Now I'm like, okay, well, I'll go get like uh, some, a roll of insulation because that's not expensive. It's like 20 bucks. And I mean, relatively that's expensive depending on, you know, but I put some insulation up in the rafters a little bit, you know, keep the, keep the drafts out. And then I'm like, you know, this is kind of an old wooden porch. And my dad put it together a long time ago. And well, there's, there's little places, gaps, where the air gets in. So while I was at the Lowe's grabbing some duct tape, I noticed a can on the shelf and it said gap filler. And I'm like, well, that's what I need because we have gaps. So I brought it home and one of the doors on our porch, we have two, one on either end. One of the doors has like this, this quarter inch gap. And, you know, over time, things worn down. There's some, there's some cold air can get in around there. And I'm like, and I had already put weather stripping up there, but it wasn't quite working. So I'm like, you know what? I'll just fill this gap with this stuff. And it'll be, that'll do it. Well, Tara, first of all, it did, that, did that not do it? It comes out like whipped cream to start with. Okay. Okay. Hi, Grady. And then as you go along, you want to come up? Come on. You want to come up? Come up if you're coming. There you go. There's the boy. It As you go along, it starts getting tacky and then sticky. And then you're supposed to leave it. And I'm like, okay. So I did. And I came back in, in about a half hour. And this stuff dries to this really hard, like, styrofoam-like consistency. Tara, I, I glued the door shut. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I, 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 gl I, glued, I, glued, I glued the door shut with the gap filler. Was it, did you, like, cover the hinges? No. No, it just, it, it said, okay, this and this, you are now one thing. Yeah. Um, now I'm what like, do you I, I do about that. I know it's one of those instances in life where you do something so completely stupid, right? That, and you have no one else to blame for it. So you want to punch somebody, but it's your fault. Cause you, you did this. And I'm sitting there going, well, how do I, d maybe I could go around the other side and I could just take a hammer and I could, could bash it open. And I actually did try that a little bit. It, it didn't work. It didn't work. So finally I got an X-Acto knife and I just cut straight down the gap and the door came open. Okay. So, all right. But just scored it. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, so, um, just, just. If you're going to mess with a thing you've never messed with before, maybe YouTube video or some Fruitsy, Fruitsy. TikToks. I don't know what the kids do. I mean, but. words to live by in so many situations, right? What is wrong with you? And we are going to start this week in a way that, you know, every, everybody's super, super happy. Two things people love. Um, fire and bees. I don't love either of those things. I mean, what? bees we do need for the ecosystem. Certain bees. What? You don't love fire and bees. Could you oh. not be on the keyboard, my love? Um, he says no, no. He says no. He says he's going to be on the keyboard. Uh, this over here. There you go. Bees cause resident to set house on fire in Beacon. This is from the Hudson Valley of the Catskills. Person trying to exterminate bees by taking a flame to the bees nest in a porch roof nearly burned down a Beacon home Saturday evening. Fire department was uh, responded 
Beacon was joined by the Castle Point and Fish Kill Fire Departments, and a second alarm was sounded at 710. Fire was extinguished at probably 730. No injuries to first responders or civilians were reported at the scene. Why do Not people a lot keep of doing this? There. I don't know why they keep doing this. Like, you don't need a flamethrower. What you do is you get a spray bottle and you fill it with bleach. Hmm. That's how Dan used to do it. Now I pay an exterminator. You don't not fire. All fire does is piss them off. And I don't know if you know this, yeah. but they can fly. <laughs> so they will, in fact, escape. Yeah. And, and will be angry. Vengeance. Like, we're not going to step on my keyboard. Th there no, are there are not what we're going to do. We're going to sit on your own keyboard, sir. And we're not going to chew on my glasses, you little menace. Sir. Sir. Apparently he is going to chew on your glasses. No, now he's licking the monitor. Yay. Here, you want a crinkly ball? Tastes like internet. Look, go taste a crinkly ball. No. Here, you want a snack? <laughs> I'm never above a bribe. We're going to, oh, he only eats snacks on the floor, so... I don't know why. You only eat snacks on the floor. There you go. I to keep you distracted for a whole 15 seconds. Because he doesn't chew. So so there Sorry. are two there are two scenarios here. One, someone owned this house and apparently did not understand that, well. If it burns down, house go away. Or two, yeah. they were renting, which, you know, on the one hand, fuck landlords. But on the other hand, you're going to get your ass in a whole bunch of trouble because there's burning down your house, already not great. Burning down somebody else's yeah. house, that's that's when they get those fancy bracelets with the little chain on them. And Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Peggy we came looking for treats, too. We call that arson. Um, yeah, it's actually arson if it's your own house too. Yes. If if, if pretty if, much if, anything even, you burn on purpose is against the law. Yeah, you're, you're not. And I know, like, I think at some point I expressed bafflement at that. I don't know why you can't burn your own house down, but you can't. <laughs> well, because the fire doesn't like to stay in one place, Tara. That's the problem is there are other houses. It gets frisky. It wants yeah. to see the world. Also, you know? like this is this is like around Westchester, New York, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's October. The bees are all going to die in about two weeks because it's fucking New York. Well, Clearly, you've put up with them all summer. The bees hibernate. Well, whatever. Though. They're not going to bother so, you. Well, no. You've put up with them all summer. Why now have you decided they have to burn? They're all going to either die or go well, to sleep I, real soon. I kind of, I kind of a little bit understand this because it's like sometimes I'm going about my day and I'm like, I do this, this, this. And all of a sudden I get in my head a task that it's like, you know what? I have to do this right now. Yeah. But usually it's like taking out the garbage or sweeping the porch not setting shit on fire. That is yeah. The executive dysfunction yeah. switch does like to flip at really random times. Right. That is fair. But when it tells you to burn things, that's 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 kind of a bigger problem. But the thing is, if the executive dysfunction switch has not flipped for so long, like I have a rug I was going to put out on my deck. I haven't done it. It's the end of summer now. It's still wrapped in plastic. The executive dysfunction switch never flipped. And so uh, now I get to put that shit off till next June. Yay. <sighs> All right. Next up, uh, this is from Florida. I'm, I'm going to have to pause to pronounce this one. The Nota Sassa. Am I saying that right? The Nota Sassa? The Nota Sassa? I don't Sassa? know. That, that's the, the Nota Sassa, Florida. 
Um, they just had Hurricane Helene, and then Milton went through lots of power outages and floodings and horrible shit. People are trying to take care of it. But you know, Tara, with all these linemen and FEMA and all these workers, you know who's really the most important person? I'm afraid of what you're going to say. Some dick bag in an SUV who's being inconvenienced. Man threatens okay, I, to shoot. I thought you were going to say Mar-a-Lago. So. Yeah. Man threatens to shoot linemen in Hillsborough County working to restore power after Hurricane Milton. Linemen working to restore power weren't warmly received by a man who deputies say threatened to shoot them after he tried to plow through a roadblock. According to Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, there was a traffic delay, delay around 3 p.m. at the intersection of McIntosh and Tamar Drive because power line crews were working on repairs. <laughs> Deputies say Kenneth Ray Velasco, let's get that, that mug shot on there because we, we need to see him, um, 57, grew impatient, and actually that's a pretty good 57, I'm just going to say. Yeah, that's, I was thinking the same thing, unfortunately. That's a pretty good 57. Uh, <laughs> Kenneth Ray Velasco, <laughs> grew impatient, and backed his vehicle into a utility pole and fence, causing $1,000 in damage before trying to drive away. The power line crew tried to stop him from leaving, but he repeatedly threatened to shoot them. Deputies add that Velasco drove toward the lineman who had to jump out of the way of the vehicle. Deputies saw Velasco's vehicle nearby and arrested him, then charged with aggravated assault and felony criminal mischief for vandalism of property. Motherfucker! Do you not understand what a fucking natural disaster entails? Like, Some fuck folks, you, bro. Some folks, I hate to break it to you, my man. Some folks are going to be a wee bit inconvenienced by, oh, I don't know, picking up all the shit that's broken. You know... Do you know how many fucking influencers went to Disney World during the hurricane specifically because they had to stay open and they knew the park wouldn't be crowded? And the reason they had to stay open was to be emergency accommodations for people evacuating, but they can't technically turn away guests, I guess. No, turn that shit off. Fucking send the mouse home. Turn off Epcot. Ain't need those goddamn Space Mountain. The fuck's wrong with you? Like, all the hotels, at least, had to stay up and running. So people were like, oh, my God, it's the perfect time to go. It is, in fact, not the perfect time to go. Is the Star Wars hotel still going? I don't know. Because that would be, that would just be fucking. No, I think it's, I think it's already closed. I think it's already closed. That would just be fucking But also, like, it's entirely possible that your house doesn't have power, Mr. Fucking Velasco, and that you're really pissed off about it. And you know what you know what you need to get that back? These guys able to do their job without you running them over. Yeah, I mean, I I, I get it's it's a skill, and I don't know how you get to 57 without acquiring the skill. It's a skill in life to learn how to balance your own emotions against the reality of a situation. The reality of the situation It's actually is, a skill that's getting worse. It is. The reality People of the situation have it worse. The reality of the situation is power's out. They gotta fix it. That's their job. That's what they're doing. It's not about you, bro. They're they're not doing this specifically to inconvenience you. There are millions of people down there. Like, I know the feeling. I get out driving in traffic and I'm like, I wish most of you didn't exist, is how I feel quite often. But that's just a feeling. It's just a feeling. I don't Every decide time you have to, to start drive through Queens. I don't decide to start knocking cars off the fucking overpass. No. Just you, you are not the most important motherfucker. Basic human empathy is slowly going extinct, and it freaks me out. Oh, yeah. Well, so are we. So, you know. Hmm. That I'm less concerned about, if we're being yeah. honest. Yes. This, yeah. This. <laughs> Next up. Um, all right. I, 
as we get into this, I, let's just get into the story because I'm already baffled by this. Uh, you know those those reenactors, those historical reenactors for like battles and stuff. They yeah. go and they are so like you think the the folks at the Ren Fair are obsessive about costumes. They are so crazy about getting every little fucking detail right. For I don't know who the fuck cares, but they are. There are some battles that Nash, maybe we were larpers. Yeah, we don't get to look down on these fucking people. Oh yes, we do, Tara. Oh yes, we do. Do you know why? Do you know why? Nazis, Tara. Oh, fucking Nazi! There you go. Everybody can look down on. Not well, yeah, we did, but you know. I played a Tremere, and it was weird how many fucking Nazi Tremere you would run into. It was very upsetting. It was very edgy. Is the thing gotta gotta be edgy? Gotta edgy. It's realistic and edgy. It's in Massachusetts. A group of World War II reenactors dressed in costume dined at a restaurant near Boston over the weekend. The actors were part of the American Heritage Museum World War II reenactment on Saturday. After the presentation, a group of them went to eat at Kith and Kin Restaurant in Hudson, Massachusetts. Get two on the, of the set. Yeah, two of the actors were wearing Nazi uniforms. Now the restaurant is facing backlash. The owners say they were forced to temporarily close due to threats against their workers. Oh. How did nobody in the group, how did nobody in the group be like, I don't know. hey, Jimmy, maybe take off your fucking Nazi uniform before we go to afters? And we, these weren't just like, you know, Nazis. These were like, you know, they had the, the swastika. They had the little SS. It was just, you know, the whole, the whole nine. The little boots. Because I remember the when whole, we had those yeah. shit heels playing Nazi Tremere, we were yeah. like, that, that shit better be the fuck off your skin before we hit the IHOP. Well, the thing is, I, I, what I, what, what's baffling me is that the, the, the hosts were like, come on in, have a seat. There's nothing weird well, about this at all. You can't piss off customers, Nash. Yes, you can. You absolutely can. Fuck customers. Gary uh, Louie, uh, the American Heritage Museum trustee, said the incident was, quote, beyond thoughtless by the actors. Uh, let's put that in context. Yeah. It's at a, it's at a time <laughs> when anti-Semitic violence is on the rise, when neo-Nazis are taking the streets, the Holocaust continues to be denied. So wearing German uniforms in a public space, that's beyond thoughtless. That's repugnant. There are protocols on how where the costumes are allowed to be presented, uh, Louis said, and this was not one of them. He said the museum itself doesn't even allow costumes with SS collars on the museum's grounds. The costumes are only supposed to be displayed on a reenactment battlefield. Why? Why? And this is, like, I know you're into your hyper-realism, but, like... Yeah. Except you are at the end of the day playing yeah. make belief. Yeah. Exceptions can be made. Well, we have to honor the battles, Tara. We have we have to. We don't much, have to much. honor the fucking Nazis in the battles. Yes, we don't Ever. have to honor. Actually, we only have to fucking honor the battles. It's it's a bunch of people killed each other for crazy shit. Why 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 are you like? And Here, here's the how same all these people when... crazy killed each other for crazy shit. It was the same problem with LARP. Like the Tremere were a clan that was based in Austria. So people were like, well, realistically, okay, but realistically, we don't really drink blood and burn in the sun. So get it the fuck together. Like if you're doing a World War II reenactment and two groups are fighting and one of them doesn't have a swastika, by process of elimination, you could probably figure out Who's Germany and who isn't? You don't have feel to have like the... just. You can tell what those uniforms look like. Like we can all picture them right. in our head from the Indiana Jones movies, with or without yes. the little armband. Uh, fucking hell! Oh, speaking of reenactments that were this motherfucker. This guy, this is from Minnesota. It's not a hate crime, it's stupidity, is the last quote in the article. Man, fuck you. It's both. Why not both? Yeah. 
Like I'm, I'm pretty sure if someone was walking along with a burning crucifix, you know, you'd, you'd feel like, no, no, I'm just carrying this down the street. I got to put it over this for a display thing. No, that's that's both. That's stupid, and I hate it's both. It's both. All right, this is from Minnesota, and um, fuck all of this man, and not in the fun ways, in the in the very unfun ways. In in just oh my god. It concerns Minnesota. me that the not the restaurant Nazis aren't our last story. Oh, we got more. Minnesota high school substitute accused of reenacting <gasps> George George Floyd's murder in class. Stop. Woodbury, Minnesota. Substitute teacher at Woodbury High School is accused of reenacting the murder of George Floyd in class with students earlier this week. Letter to fam family's principal Sarah uh, Sorensen Wagner said the is Wagner or Vag Wagner ah. said the incident happened on Monday. She said it was unprovoked. It happened in English classes for sophomores and seniors. Adding the teacher was immediately removed from class and police are now investigating. Students reported their substitute teacher, Stephen Williams, said he thought students would want to hear about life as a police officer. Williams works as a police officer in Prescott, Wisconsin, and has since been placed on administrative leave. Some of the events students report happening in the class include the act of putting a student on the ground in front of the class as part of a reenactment of the police actions that resulted in George Floyd's murder. murder sorry. Other allegations include the twisting of a student's arm behind their back and demonstration of the pressure points on the chin and face. The students also say Williams repeatedly ra repeated racially harmful comments and sexist jokes, made comments that, quote, police brutality isn't real and, quote, cops would be the best criminals because, quote, they know how to get away with stuff, stating he once got an A on a paper on how to get away with murder. Well, clearly he doesn't watch this show, does he? Mm. Cops suck at skating away with stuff. <sighs> When you say that students might want to hear about my career as a policeman, they don't, even if that were true, that doesn't mean we start beating them up. And also, police brutality isn't real, doesn't really go with, here, let me show you how he murdered that guy with his knee on his neck. It's, it's... It... The cognitive dissonance is just... It's just stunning on display here because we've got, on the one hand, police brutality isn't real and cops would be the best criminals. Right. Those, those you don't, I don't. It, now, they do get away with a lot of shit because they protect each other. Like, God help you if you're married to a cop and he beats you up. Good luck, man. Good luck. Because they're going to cover for him. Uh, they're, they're not great criminals because they're great criminals. They're great criminals because they're the mafia. Yeah. Um, there's something called a short-term substitute which can replace a regular teacher for up to 20 days in a row. For that, you just need a bachelor's degree and one of several state licenses. Um, there's also a state pilot program that allows someone to be a substitute if they have district training and a minimum of an associate's degree. Alternatively, they can have a high school diploma, GED, or high school equivalency, along with one year of work experience as an education support professional. I don't think that that qualifies there, but um, yeah, we we've we've underfunded public uh, education, so we're desperate for teachers. So this, I Yahoo. honestly don't know. I don't know how fucking teachers do it, man. Like it was not an easy job to start with. No. And like, well, wait a minute. Now, like, you have to be a guard. You, you might have to literally get shot. We're going to pay you like 10 grand a year. Uh, we're going to make the job way harder. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to make it so literally any fucking asshole can take your job. As long as he is willing to say what we think he should say. Yeah. I just, it, well, he is teaching them about cops. They, mm -hmm. they are learning some important lessons there. Okay, but you can't walk on the keyboard, so don't give me that snapping turtle business. Well, we have some more fun in Florida for this one. 
Thank you. Good boy. They are, they are just, they're being inexplicable this week, Tara. What in the entire fucking... My fucking heart rate is up. Fuck. Man points flamethrower at police. Arrested in Point St. Lucie. Man is Arrested behind alive. bars. Yeah. I wonder what his complexion is like. Man is behind bars after brandishing a flamethrower at police. Joseph Morton, 39, was charged and arrested with one count of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon on a law enforcement officer and one count of resisting an officer without violence. Port St. Lucie Police Department said it responded to a report of an explosion with smoke in the area. When officers arrived, Morton uh, was allegedly yelling at officers from his backyard. Morton armed with a handheld flamethrower. I think we got a picture of the damn thing. I just want to show you. It's just, it's whack. There it is. Um... See if I can make that a little bigger because just there we go. What the fuck? Um, armed with a handheld flamethrower, came to his front yard and into the roadway where officers were parked. Police department said it ordered Morton to drop the flamethrower at gunpoint to the ground, but he refused. Police department says he continued to approach the officers. He pointed the flamethrower at one of them. An officer was close enough to grab the flamethrower. <laughs> So again, I wonder what his complexion was like. According to the police department, this is this is even better. According to the police department, Morton retreated to his home. With the home surrounded, officers requested for Morton to exit the home. According to the police department, Morton appeared at his You're front not door. Say it? What? Come on. <laughs> oh yeah. Come out of there. No, you're just gonna yell at me. According to the police department. No, it gets better. Morton appeared at his front door and attempted to blind an officer with a flashlight. Like, okay, so your first plan was flamethrower. Actually, your first plan was blowing something up. We still don't know what blew up. But something exploded, and your first response to this was flamethrower. That was plan A. Plan B was flashlight i i'm not that's a downgrade <laughs> that's a bit a bit yeah um it's and he got it's, tased yeah it got tased <laughs> like if you point now a listen, flashlight i'm not at saying i i'm not saying this guy should have got shot uh, That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying they let him get close enough to them with a flamethrower that they could grab it out of his hands. And then they I let him run away once he was unarmed. And then they only I, tased him. You know, I'm looking at this, this fucking thing. I'm not sure if this. And I feel like it would have gone handmade. differently. If he was a little more melanated. If you just look saying. at the, if you look at the stock on this thing. At the very back, it's got one of those like missile switches that they, that's in like the F-16s. They have like the the, the, co the switch covers that they have to flip up and then to flip the switch to keep people from touching the switch. Like, who the fuck are you, man? You're not at fucking NORAD. You got a fucking Where did you get that thing? Where did you get that thing? That's what I want to know. That looks like, I swear to God, that looks like some Radio Shack ass parts on this thing. Look at that. That little switch Dude is right out there. on five thousand five hundred dollar. Or no, he's being held on five thousand five hundred dollar bond. Yeah, I just that I, seems I'm loving, low. I'm loving that he's like, okay, I'm gonna blind them with a flamethrower. Then I'm, not, I'm gonna blind them with a flashlight. Then what? What were you going to do? Like, oh, we can't see him. Let's fall back. It's got. We can't see. We are. Disabled, like, we must. They, they grabbed a fucking flamethrower out of your hands, and you think they're going to be scared <laughs> off by a flashlight? Well, it's a mag light, Tara. Those, those are the big yeah. ones. Those are scary. Oh, Wouldn't want to shoot right. anyone with a flamethrower and risk the tank exploding. That's true. I, I don't know if you can see. I don't know if you can see the picture of this thing. Yeah. Cops are cops are trained to shoot for center mass. Right. This thing's not exactly. Jo yeah. I feel like yeah. you'd have to be a pretty fucking terrible shot. Yeah. To fuck that up. Yeah. Last one this week is from Poland. And um, 
Holy shit. I don't know how I would react to this. I don't know what I would do in this situation. I I I, I can't even imagine. It's just like, holy shit. Funeral home in Poland apologizes after corpse falls out of a hearse and into traffic. The company transporting the body blamed the incident on a, quote, an unexpected technical failure. I would imagine it would be unexpected. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think the corpses getting out of the car should be an expected thing. It's not like an everyday occurrence. You see the name of the fucking funeral home? Hades Funeral Home. Hades Funeral Home. Who's going there? The company transporting the body in in southeast. It probably means something different in Polish, but damn. They apologize to quote all those who were disappointed and upset by this event. It's a deep regret that we inform you as a result of an unexpected technical failure of the electric tailgate lock in the hearse. During the transport of the body of the deceased, an unfortunate event occurred which does not reflect the high standards of our company. (laughs) Our deep empathy toward the family of the deceased, Polish media reported that a man driving down the street on Friday was left fearing he had hit someone after he saw a body in the road and a sheet on his car window. The body came out of the coffin? Yes. Was it a coffin? It was a corpse, Tara. The image of the corpse lying. Well, the picture white is of a coffin in a hearse. Yeah, they don't have the actual picture Oh, so picture they had Okay. Yeah. I see. They were like, okay. An image of the corpse lying. My dad used on- to... When my dad first came to this country, um, the people that the funeral home that we had do his funeral, um, he had been friends with forever. And the owner came back out of retirement just to do my dad's funeral because my dad had worked for him when he first came to the country. And the thing he did for him was transport bodies. Um, You know, go pick up the dead person. Yeah, I mean, if you've ever seen dead like me, yeah, this is the thing you have to do. Yeah, the, the, I guess there were a couple times when the hearse wasn't available. So they just used like the back seat of my dad's car. Tara. Tara. According to my dad. How? How? In the entire fuck did you have an antidote, anecdote to go <laughs> along with the story? How in Jesus's hairy ball sack? <laughs> Did you have an anecdote for this fucking story? My parents were interesting people. I just, I, I'm imagining all of a sudden you're driving along, a sheet hits the front of your car. You're like, oh no. And you pull it off. There's a corpse in the road. Yeah. What that would be a fuck? shiny new heart attack for me. Yeah. That'd be like, I, I, I am always worried whenever I get involved in, in traffic sort of stuff. Like I'm like the, I'm in trouble. Part of my brain just starts going big red fucking alarm. I don't know how I'd be like, okay, maybe I should drive to Mexico. I, I, I think I should leave now. Cause I live in fear. I back out of my garage and I have both of my neighbors have small children and I take care of several feral cats. Mm. So I check 67 times before I back out of my garage that there is not a small child or a cat. We don't have a garage. Our cats like this, the, the, the neighborhood cats, they'll sleep under the fucking cars. They have, they're dumb as shit. Dumb little fucking fur. We have, we constantly have to check. Oh, guys, I'm not allowed to write my autobiography. Every member of my family has said that they'll disown me. I have to wait till everybody's dead. Yeah. Sorry. Just, oh my God. I, this is, this, this is like a sitcom moment, right? Like an HBO. This does feel like something that would happen on like The Office. Yeah. Or like it's always sunny. Yeah, something like that. It doesn't feel real, does it? <laughs> you get back to like you drive back to work. Okay, boss. Um, good news, bad news. Uh, good news is he's still dead. 
Um, <laughs> bad news. Ah, Jesus Christ. And when my dad died, we didn't use a hearse. We put, because he was a fireman, they put his coffin on top of the fire truck, the hook and ladder. And you want to talk anxiety? Watch like 10 firemen trying to hook a coffin with an with a large man inside up on top of a fucking fire truck. Didn't they anybody have a fucking winch or some shit? They did it. They like lifted that shit. It was impressive and terrifying. So the first thing we've learned this week is be careful in traffic because you never know when a corpse is going to be launched at your vehicle. Yeah. That's a thing that can happen in life. You don't learn about that shit in driver's ed. We have learned no, that. No, they don't prepare you for that. We have learned that if your first plan is flamethrower, you don't have a lot to go with for a backup. So, yeah. We have learned Write it under that. a pen name. I will get caught. Yeah. We've learned that um, the standards for substitute teachers are remarkably low, and that's terrifying. Uh, we have learned that if you show up at a restaurant at fucking Olive Garden with a fucking Nazi outfit, they might seat you. I mean, the Olive Garden is an Italian restaurant. Oh, shit. Just saying. <laughs> when you're here, you're family. When you're here, you're fascist. Anyway, um, we've learned that if people are trying to put your city back together after a natural disaster, you are pretty low down on everybody's priority levels. Okay? Let them. Let them. Let them do that. You down here, them up here. Okay? Just chill your, your shit is not that important yeah and finally we've learned the solution to bees is not fire we just keep learning that it's like it's like those flash cards they used to teach you like greater than less than and then like you know how many the, the <laughs> bees does not equal fire that's not how that works but which is the greater than in that equation? Oh, definitely bees. Yeah? Tara, the fire can't hate you. 